This is my brand new 2020 Scott's Park. And boy, is this bike something special. This video is all about how myself and the best housemate in the world, Dan, built up my new Scott Spark 120mm trail bike. But let's be honest, it's going to be best for everyone involved that Dan does the bike stuff and I do the filming stuff. It would be like asking Michael Jordan to quit basketball and become a professional baseball player. Wait, wait, that, that really happened? I thought that was just the plot for the Space Jam movie. That was real? Whoa, my mind is blown. Well, I've just read that there's going to be a second Space Jam movie coming up. Okay, that's cool, but let's get back to bikes here. The plan was simple. Build the bike. Step one, unwrap the bike. And this was done with efficiency and aplomb. And yes, everything here was recycled. Uh, what's Dan doing now? Ah, uh, yep, he's looking for the 1UP 180mm dropper post. This is probably one of my favourite things on the bike right now. I'm 5'10 and 180mm drop feels just about perfect for me. I think they're pretty well priced too. How much are they? 200 bucks? That's not bad. Oh, that's US dollars by the way. Exchange rates change all the time and I'll just stick with this currency for now. Oh, the smaller ones are a bit cheaper. Oh, I didn't know that. I'm also sponsored by these guys, just so you know. That was pretty sponsored dream level, wasn't it? There's a link in the description for all the products I use and the brands I work with. Uh, yep, you should go check them out. All of them are splendid. Well, this is kind of getting a bit off topic. Okay, well, no, not really. That white foam is gonna go over the cables and the hose inside the down tube to stop them rattling around. Don't forget that bit. For some reason, Dan couldn't find anything on my shelves. I've no idea why, it's pretty well organized if I do say so myself. He went with installing the bottom bracket first which I responded with some telling advice that he should probably do the cable routing first. He ignored me, which normally would be a pretty solid decision to make, but not this time. Oh, he's also done something else wrong here. Can you spot it? Comment below if you can. Oh, hold on. This is getting all a bit Dan negative, isn't it? He knows a lot more than me about building a bike. I'll be quiet. Don't worry. I'm really nice to this guy. I made some banana bread the other day and told him he could help himself. He was pretty happy about that. Aha, fork install. Did you know that headsets come in a whole bunch of different sizes? Well, probably. But did you know that some of the differences are 0.1 mil? That's nuts, isn't it? Every day is a school day, as they say. I wonder who the first person was that came up with that saying. Every day is a school day. I'd like to come up with a saying. Hmm, what would it be? Be nice and people will smile. Hmm, seems kind of generic. Mm, I'll claim that. Is, that. is that how it works? For the 1UP EDC toll that goes in your head tube. Toll? That's not right. Man, that was a bad typo. Tool, the EDC tool. You need to tap the steerer tube for it, and you also need something to lubricate the tap. My big brain realized we could use the Whistler Performance Lube's fork boost. What a good idea. And it worked a treat. Dan was also really satisfied with how well he tapped it and talked at length about how nice it was. I decided to help out by doing some sweeping. And then we faffed around for a bit more and decided to do the internal routing. Routing, routing. Dan took off the shock to do the twin lock routing, which was a very good idea. He asked if I had cable ferrules, and of course I did. Here you go, Dan. Cable ferrules. I then got really excited because this was the first bike I'd be putting Shimano XCR on, which I have dreamt of since I was 14 years old, working in a bike shop. The owner actually spent an entire afternoon once explaining why his 8-speed XCR was so good. True story. Well, Dan got that done pretty quick, and so it was time to put the wheels in. He's pretty good at putting tires on better than me. Now, some days passed because it turns out I'd ordered the wrong rotors. I thought all my wheels would be six bolt, but I was wrong. Whoops. I had found some adapters in the meantime, but Dan actually went real outside mountain biking and I needed to make a video. And I thought, who even is this Dan guy? I don't need him. I'm a strong independent YouTuber who can do it all myself. Oh, also Whistler Performance Loops came out with a brand new environmentally friendly tubeless sealant. How cool is that? Oh, oh, I'm gonna talk about it now. As per usual, environmentally friendly, there's no latex in there and it's a race ready tubeless sealant. So that means that there's small bits, there's big bits. It uses only natural fibers from sustainable sources. And these fibers vary in size to seal punctures from very small to up to half an inch. It's non-toxic, non-corrosive and eco-friendly. And you can pick some up by clicking the link in the description and using code PUNTER10 at checkout for 10% off. As I finished that bit, I realized, oh no, I do need that. 
After a bit of sitting on the floor, I realized maybe I could do it alone. Come on, Paul, it's only tires. I also noticed that Dan had put the front tire on backwards. Nightmare. Lots of people ask me about these mission tires, and yeah, I've really liked riding them so far. But they do have a bit of a downside, and that is that they are a bit tight to get on the rim. This kind of line will normally elicit about 30 comments of, oh, you got to get the tire in the channel, or if you do it this way, it's no problem. As incompetent as I portray myself, I can do tires. Don't panic. I'm just struggling a bit with these. I did the enduro ones okay, but uh, whatever. Maybe Dan just has stronger forearms or something. Wait, do you know any good forearm exercises? Yeah, post that. Yeah, that would be good. I gave up with the tires and put my one up bars on just to feel good about myself. Thankfully, the next day, Dan had finished riding and was back. That meant we could get some cool shots of this sealant. Oh, it's green too. Reminds you it's environmentally friendly, you see. Dan uses these blue park tool tire levers that are the dream at getting tires on and off. And booyah! Here we have tires on wheels. The Shimano 12-speed stuff uses a different free hub body than the one that came on the wheels, so we swap those over. All you need is a spanner and an Allen key. Wait, should I say wrench? Oh, do you know what? I've just given up saying both at the same time now. Aluminium, aluminum, you know what I mean, punters. The sun is still gonna rise tomorrow. Let's build a bridge and get over it. Ooh, that's a cool wheel shot. And oh boy, look at that XTR cassette. 51 tooth is the biggest cog. And yes, I can actually ride up walls with this ratio. It's pretty cool. The brakes are the cross country XTR versions because, uh, I mean, well, this is a cross country bike. I mean, that should be obvious. Carbon levers too, ooh, pretty flash. Wait, who says flash anymore? Then Dan got the brake hose through first time, which was great. But all that was filmed pretty late in the evening. I don't know why. Wait, I do. It was raining all day and me and Dan just wanted to play video games and eat snacks. We're only human, what can I say? Gotta take those rest days, am I right? But then we'd actually got up before 10 a.m. on this day and what it brought me a new hat with the logo under the peak. Looks pretty cool in real life, but for some reason, the wide angle lens makes it look like I'm Anton Deck, but when they were PJ and Duncan in 1993. Whoa, I guess that year, and it was actually right according to Wikipedia, 1993. For all North Americans out there, it's an English reference. I'm actually holding back from doing loads of them, so just for you guys, that's the only one I'm gonna do. Dan gets the routing for the dropper post dialed and I realize that I can answer a question I get asked genuinely all the time about my twin lock setup. How do I set up my dropper post lever with the Scott twin lock? Here on the XTR lever, you have the clamp and then you have this little other bit that I guess reinforces so it's stronger. So you take your twin lock lever without the drop post because we're gonna use the one up dropper post lever. Get the clamp part way on, don't let that bit go on and you slot it in between there. Damn it. <laughs> I've never dropped anything. <laughs> Zero dabs. And you just slide her on. Yeah. And then underneath here, boop, boop, boop. that's where the drop post lever goes on. And that's how you do it. So easy. And now you can have the best of everything. You can have your twin lock and you can have a really great drop post lever. Pretty simple, huh? Oh, twin lock. I mean, what even is that? It's Scott's system that allows you to either fully lock out, have your suspension fully open, or have it in traction mode. Now that essentially reduces the rear travel by making the shock significantly more progressive. I use it all the time and sincerely find it really useful. The way I have it set up means I only use the traction mode and not the fully locked out mode, but I find that perfectly okay for pedaling. And there we go. This should answer all the questions and yeah, I really use it. Oh, time lapse, I like those. Time to snip the brake hoses. The Shimano hose cutter is pretty neat. I've chatted about that in another video. Oh, there it is, it's popped up right now. Dan put the cranks on and the chain, always the most exciting bit because it starts to look like a real bike then. Oh, check out this time lapse of me putting the water bottle cage on. Yep, it really is the most important part. And yes, I did this all by myself with no adult supervision. Doesn't take long to set up the gears because Shimano. Then we put on these rad pedals that Crank Brothers gave me, which are made of freaking titanium and weigh nothing. Wait, why is it titanium and not titanium? Titanium? Hmm, something to think about. Dan does the final brake bleed and all of a sudden, the bike is complete. Whoa, that wasn't bad at all. Hmm, what to do now? All right, I better do an epic slow-mo of all the parts. <coughs> This is my new Scott Spark 900 in a size large with 29 inch wheels. It's got 120 mil of travel up front and 120 mil of travel out back and is made of carbon. You may know I had one of these last year and it's an incredibly capable bike. I've got a Fox 34 up front 
and a Fox Nude Evolve Shock Outback, and both of them use the Scott Twin Lock system. The drivetrain is XDR 12 speed with a 10 to 51 tooth cassette out back, a 32 tooth chainring, and 170 mm cranks. The brakes are XDR 9100, two pistons with 180 mm rotors front and rear. Cockpit is the one-up carbon handlebar in a 20 mm rise, cut down to 780 mm with one-up grips and paired with the one-up 50 mm stem. The bar is shaped to be vertically compliant while still retaining stiffness for better steering. For the seat post, I'm using the 180mm one-up dropper post, and it has the shortest insertion length on the market. My wheels are the Syncross Silverton 1.0s. They are 29 inches, of course, and weigh 1750 grams. These are shod in the 2.35 Michelin Wild AM tires for that down country feel. The bike is finished off with some Crank Brothers Candy 11 titanium pedals with a Syncross Tofino 1.0 saddle. And that's it. Can't wait to get outside and rip it up on this thing, but I'm gonna get it wrapped by Ride Wrap next week, so for now, it's gonna hang out in the garage. But what do you think? Hopefully everyone is doing okay out there and enjoyed this build video, and that it might even have taken your mind off the current situation just a little bit. Like the video if you did, and if you aren't already, it would be awesome if you subscribe to the channel to catch future videos. Cheers punters, I will see you next time.